Alright. Um, I need to study for MCAT, so that's what I'm in the process of doing. And I've looked online for um, something to help me better understand the endocrine system. And nothing like this exists, so I'm going to be the one to make it. Um, it's really basic. It's just me reciting the list and um, the most important hormones and the sources they come from in the body. And uh, following listening to this, you should have pleasurable understanding of what comes from where. And never forget this. Check it out, yo. In the interior pituitary, you have flat peg. F-L-A-T-P-E-G. You have follicle stimulating hormone, which stimulates follicle maturation and spermatogenesis. Then, you have luteinizing hormone, which stimulates ovulation and testosterone synthesis. Next, you got adrenocorticotropic hormone, which stimulates adrenal cortex to make and secrete glucocorticoids. After that, you got thyroid stimulating hormone, which stimulates the thyroid to produce thyroid hormones. Then you have prolactin, which stimulates milk production and secretion. Then you have endorphins, which inhibit the perception of pain in the brain. Then you have growth hormone, which stimulates bone and muscle growth slash lipolysis, which is the splitting of fats. Next, we go to the hypothalamus, where these hormones are stored in the posterior, the rear part of the pituitary. You have only two things. You have oxytocin, which stimulates uterine contractions during labor, milk secretions during lactations. So that's that. And then you have vasopressin, also known as ADH, antidiuretic hormone. This stimulates water reabsorption in the kidneys. Next, we move on to the thyroid. Thyroid produces the thyroid hormones, T4 and T3. These things stimulate metabolic activity, as you already know. In the thyroid also, you have calcitonin, which decreases or tones down blood calcium level. Next, from the thyroid, we go to the parathyroid, with, which has the parathyroid hormone, the little beads inside the thyroid. And parathyroid hormone functions in increasing the blood calcium level. Next, we go to the adrenal cortex. It contains glucocorticoids and mineral corticoids. The glucocorticoids increase blood glucose level and decrease protein synthesis. Mineral corticoids increase water absorption in the kidneys. Next, we go to the adrenal medulla. Adrenal medulla possesses, possesses epinephrine and norepinephrine, which increase blood glucose level and heart rate. In the pancreas, you have glucagon, insulin, and somatostatin. Glucagon stimulates the conversion of glucogen to glucose in the liver and increases blood glucose. Insulin lowers blood glucose and increases glucogen stores. Somatostatin suppresses the secretion of both glucagon and insulin. In the testes, you have testosterone, which maintains the male secondary sexual characteristics. Then you go to the ovary and the placenta. This is where estrogen and progesterone are maintained. Estrogen maintains the female secondary sexual characteristics. Progesterone promotes growth and maintenance of the endometrium. Then you go to the pineal gland, which holds melatonin. Its use is unclear in humans. Then you go to the heart. The heart holds the atrial natri uh, natriuretic peptide which is involved in osmoregulation and vasodilation and lastly you have your thymus which is distinct from the thyroid the thymus has thymosin which stimulates T lymphocyte development so that's it for now good luck on destroying the MCAT